absolutely in the middle of everything. And, and environment, agriculture, trade, intellectual property, <laughs> you, you name it, it affects the gene bank. We want to ensure the long-term preservation of the rice genetic materials, the different varieties of rice. So uh, people collect and then uh, deposit here, and then we want to ensure that the materials will be readily available to all the users worldwide, so the people withdraw seeds from the gene bank. And we are providing this for free. Well, indeed, we think of extension a lot, and a lot of what we have in the gene bank is varieties that no longer exist in the field. Farmers don't grow them, they're, they're no longer wanted, even though they contain within them the genes that we need for, for progress. So in the, in the past, we were focusing more on yield enhancement and uh, trying to elevate under, under standard conditions. Uh, but now we see them as actually certain environmental threats and we need to now act. So if we don't have actually such a reserves of uh, the genetic variability, we cannot do anything. We want to extend the life of the seed so that we will keep the genetic uh, integrity or we, we will not change the characteristics of the sample. A rice seed is not like a panda, it's not like a blue whale. It, it doesn't attract the public interest. Different types of rice doesn't attract as much interest as whole species cakes. We're, we're talking about extinction of genetic diversity. A lot of people like the word treasure trove. We say we've got pretty much all the genes you can ever imagine wanting to, to make progress. Somewhere in the gene bank, we have the genes we need to solve any sort of problem, whether it's climate change or new diseases or, or new knowledge or nutrition or whatever, we can solve the problem. You even got photographs where someone noticed a rainbow with a hoop of the rainbow ending on top of the gene bank and saying, here, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is the gene bank. But then the countries that have contributed the material to the gene bank think, hang on, we've given away a pot of gold. Um, is that fair or not? My, my answer is that the treasure doesn't lie in those varieties in themselves. It, it lies in what you do with them. If each country was to say, this diversity is ours, we're going to hang on to it, we're not going to let other people get hold of it, which is really quite counterproductive because the profit is only realized when you combine the genes of one country with the genes of another country. That's the lesson I think IR8 was what really brought it home, that one variety growing over millions of hectares it was an incredible success. But they realized this actually was not very sustainable. And that paradox that the more successful they were with IR8, the more they were putting at risk the sus further sustainable development of, of rice agriculture. And, and the key was to build up a collection of diversity so that no matter what happened in, in farmers' fields, we would still have a, a collection of diversity that we could continue to make progress with. What we, a lot of people don't appreciate it is, is how central conservation is to adaptation, to making progress, to making new inventions. It's actually not strange at all that we have a, a separate gene bank to conserve diversity. It's an essential part of making progress. It's not a backwards-looking conservation of what we used to have. It's necessary for looking forward to what we need for the future. <laughs>